I moved overseas, I did a, um, ended up doing a, a cycling tour of the Pyrenees and I was in a share house with someone else who, who also wasn't a, traditionally a cyclist and I thought, well, if they think they can do it, I can do it. So I did it and it was the best thing, best thing I've ever done in my life. And for me, it was something that marked, marked something, you know, an important point. And I think that's probably what detoured me maybe into more cycling. So when I came back to Australia, I decided to set a goal and train for an Ironman triathlon because I thought I could do the cycling bit. I've just cycled the Pyrenees and swimming I loved. The running was going to be a bit of a challenge. And unfortunately, I got hit by a car riding my bike while I was training. So that ended everything. And ironically now, through lots of support and whatnot, I've been able to get back on a bike, although it is modified, but it's, it's still cycling, it's still out. And it's such a passion of mine to, to be able to move. I think ironically, because my mobility is limited when I'm not on a bike or using adaptive equipment, but that proves that you can pretty much do anything that you can put your mind to, but with a little bit of help, a little bit of adaption, yeah, you can do it and I absolutely love it. I sustained multiple injuries. I had a head trauma, spinal damage, um, and some internal um, injuries as well. And I was placed in an induced coma for about five weeks. That's what I've been told, because I was sleeping. And, um, when I woke up, I was oblivious. So I have paralysis in both my legs um, and my right arm. So I jokingly call myself a, a triaplegic because I've got three dodgy limbs. But for me, that's almost like a, a red flag. So I, in a sense that to push me to go further. So I did a cycling tour in the Pyrenees in 2008. That was in my head from the rehab, from the initial hospital, somebody had brought a photo of me in, put it behind my bed and people would ask about it and go, oh, that's me in 2008. And I got in my head that I want to go back again, oblivious to the fact that my legs didn't work. And, but to me, it was something. So that was possibly a goal that inadvertently got in my head, even though I probably didn't articulate it as a goal. Tell me about making it back to the Pyrenees in 2019 and how significant that was for you. That was huge. I could have dropped dead the next day, my life was complete. It was just absolutely amazing, you know. It was, it was like, um, it was a really positive, it wasn't a negative thing returning somewhere, you know, 10 years later. Um, and I, the significance of the 10 years was I was marking my 10 year anniversary for my accident date, which most people probably find that as a bit strange. But for me, it was a celebration. I'd come so far from those early days, you know. Um, I just remember that one big climb I did, which was 14, you know, excruciating um, kilometres up a climb. That's 14 kilometres climbing. And I have to say, it wasn't all happy days. I was, there was lots of swearing and cursing and what am I doing here? Who, what did I think that, but when I got to the top, honestly, it was the biggest achievement I've ever had in my life. And I even get a bit teary, teary talking about it now. It's a big day, very emotional, but I'm done. I did it. On to the next one. I'd like to get back and do another cycling trip. Maybe perhaps either back in France in the Pyrenees, because I just love it, or even back to Italy. Probably closer short-term goal is I just need to sit down and pick an event to do a cycling event. So I don't usually like to get out of bed for less than 60 Ks, which doesn't sound a lot to most people, but to cycling, a lot of events aren't that short. And if they are, they're a little bit too social. So 60 Ks with a nice hill, because I don't mind a hill. So um, yeah, there's, there's always something in the pipeline to keep me busy, keeps me out of mischief.